Hello friends, in this video we are going to see one interesting experiment which led to Nobel in 1937. So let's see what is the experiment. In 1927, Clinton Davison and Lester Germer have established one result from their experiment. This experiment they were doing from 1921. So we will see shortly what is that experiment. So we often call this experiment as Davison and German experiment because they both performed this experiment. So what was their ex experiment? I will draw the experimental setup. So there was heated coil. So there was some arrangement so that this coil will get heated and there was some collimator. So what was the purpose of this hot coil? This coil will eject electrons and these electrons will travel through this collimator so that the beam will get collimated. Now, this electron beam will fall on nickel crystal. Right. So, the, this is the target. Nickel crystal was the target. And then there was one detector which can rotate in a circular path. So, the, this distance will be fixed, but the angle will be different. So, we will call this angle as phi. You might think, oh, they have done this experiment and they won the Nobel. So, that was not that easy. There was an accident. So, obviously, if this electron are colliding with some air particle, then those electrons will not reach up to nickel. So, entire system, this entire system has to be evacuated. So, whole system was in the vacuum chamber and somehow in 1924, this system got leaked and oxygen passed into this chamber and this nickel was turned into nickel oxide. What they were observing, they want to observe how the electrons are getting scattered from this nickel surface. Now, why they are doing this? What was their motive? Their motive was as electrons are very small in size, the metal surface may be rough for them. So they want to study the surface of nickel and that's why they were they are using electron beam to just study the nickel surface. But now due to this accident, this nickel was turned into nickel oxide. So they wanted nickel so what they do, they remove oxide by rubbing or some other experiments, they have somehow turned this nickel oxide into nickel. And then again they put here in place of the target. But now what they observed was totally different. At some particular angle, they saw some maximum intensity of scattered electrons. So what could be the reason? Previously, they could see everywhere electrons are there, but now they are seeing that at some particular angle only, the intensity of the electron beam is maximum, scattered electron is maximum. So what actually happened was, the initial nickel was polycrystalline. Okay, so there were randomly oriented nickel particles, so there were all possible orientation of crystals so electron can if like that this some can like this some can like this right so all possibilities of reflection was there so we were getting everywhere electron beam but now what happened was due to this process due to this accident and then removal of oxygen from nickel oxide this nickel turned into monocrystalline so all the crystal were aligned in the same line. So if one crystal is in this direction, then all crystals are aligned in the same direction. So now what could happen? Electron can just have one particular angle of scattering. Now what they observed further was the intensity distribution is like X-ray distribution. So earlier, Bragg was formulated one law for X-ray diffraction 
and they observed similar type of diffraction pattern in this intensity in the electron scattering from the nickel surface so i will draw what was the curve what was the graph so we are seeing the graph now on the y axis on the vertical axis we are plotting phi the angle so the angle between the original and scattered electron beam right so that was the angle and then along x axis along the horizontal axis we are plotting the intensity so what was observed the observed such kind of diffraction pattern so the intensity is increasing as the angle is increasing and again at certain angle what they observe was the intensity is again decreasing then at certain angle again they observe that the intensity is increasing again decreasing so they are observing the diffraction pattern so light also showed the same diffraction pattern or x rays were also showing that diffraction pattern then what happened they changed the acceleration how they changed the voltage so there was we have seen there was a electron gun which was heating and then ejecting the electrons so it was maintained on the voltage so they tried 44 volt 46 volt and so on up to 54 volt they varied the voltages different voltages from 44 to 54 and up to 60 say so they varied voltages and plotted the same graph same observation so what they observed this intensity curve shows the same kind of observation but the width of maximum intensity is going to change and what they observed was this maximum change is at 54 volt okay i will write down all the observations first observation was the intensity is dependent on the angle intensity depends on the angle but it is not directly proportional so i will not draw proportionality side but it is dependent on the angle then the second observation whatever will be the voltage what they observe was the highest intensity is observed at phi equal to 50 degree at phi equal to 50 degree the observed i is equal to i max that is the intensity is maximum whatever may be the voltage then they observed third thing and that was the intensity is maximum at 54 voltage so at 54 volt the intensity from 44 to 54 the intensity gets increases so this width is going increasing but at this angle at 50 degree and after this 54 volt after let's say 55 56 then again this maximum curve becomes lesser so the width will become shorter and shorter so this three were observations so these observations are matching with the bragg's law of x ray diffraction now you know who shows the diffraction wave of particle obviously wave shows the diffraction pattern so this phenomena can be explained only if electrons could be the wave the similar kind of experiment was done by g p thomson this is a different thomson than the thomson of atomic model so this is g p thomson he has also done the same experiment independently and so in 1937 davison and thomson shared the nobel nobel prize for the discovery of electron as a wave or electron diffraction so what was the importance of this experiment so that this experiment got the nobel this experiment has proved the de bra hypothesis which we have seen in the last video that every moving particle has associated with the wave and the wavelength of that particle moving particle is given by h divided by p where h is a planck's constant and p is the linear momentum of that particle